everybody, and welcome to another episode of Positive Parenting with Astrology. I am your host and resident Gemini, Maria Rieger, and today we're talking about how to parent your Pisces child when you're an Aquarius mom or an Aquarius dad. And there is nobody nobody better to talk to about this topic than my good friend and fellow astrologer and parenting expert, Dominique Caramillo, who is an Aquarius mom of a wonderful Pisces child. So she's here to talk all about this with us today. So before we get into it, please like this video and subscribe to my channel for your free, regular positive parenting with astrology content. Hey, Dominique, how are you doing today? I'm great, Maria. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm excited to have this conversation. <laughs> Absolutely. You are the person to talk to about Pisces children because uh, your son is 11 or? Yes. He's 11. Okay. 11 so, and a half. so he's uh, definitely, you know, his own person. Uh, getting into the preteen years, it's an exciting yeah. time. My son is yes. my son is almost thirteen, so we, you know, we're definitely this is a time of a lot of change. <laughs> I know. I keep thinking, uh, like when Alex Trano said that twelve is like the biggest yeah. year in a child's yeah. life. I'm like, he's coming up on twelve. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, <laughs> you know? gotta be so ready for it. I'm excited. Yeah, he's coming into his own and and really seeing him develop into his own person. And um, yeah, it's fun, but we're, you know, we're entering new territory. <laughs> no, yeah, for sure. It's exciting stuff too. Like they get older, yeah. have more interests and it's, you can share a lot of stuff. It's, it's a very, very cool time. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do kind of a general overview of Aquarius traits. Then we're going to do a general overview of Pisces traits. And then we're going to get into all the kind of not all the, because it's impossible to include everything in one video, but we're going to hit some highlights about the gifts that the Aquarius parent can bring to the Pisces child and vice versa. So um, if uh, after this video, if you guys have any questions or follow up, please uh, email me or comment below. Okay, um, I have done several videos on Aquarius kids, not too many on Aquarius parents, but as you know, Aquarius is a fixed air sign. It is a masculine energy sign. So that means it approaches the world more from a place of logic and detachment. So it's similar to Gemini in that respect. Um, it's very different from how Pisces people approach the world, which we'll talk about in a little bit. The nature of air is to cover a lot of breath and a lot of subjects, but not always in depth. Again, that's very different from uh, Pisces energy. Aquarian people, I know a lot of Aquarian adults and they all seem to be very knowledgeable on like a host of topics. It is an energy that is just able to cover a whole range of topics and be knowledgeable about them. Uh, since it's air, an air sign, it can be a scattered energy, uh, very similar to uh, to Gemini in that uh, that respect, doing many different things at different times. Since the nature of air is to go around obstacles instead of kind of facing them head on, Aquarian people sometimes are not super comfortable with direct confrontation and conflict. Although I will say, and I'd be interested to know what Dominique, what you think about this, um, my experience is that Aquarian people are more comfortable with direct conflict and confrontation than Gemini and Libra people. And I attribute that to a couple things um, I want to point out real quick. One is because of the fixed energy nature of the sign. And also, this is something that not everybody thinks about automatically, but in traditional astrology, Aquarius was co-ruled by Saturn. And this direct, you know, propension for handling things, tackling things directly, direct confrontation, direct communication is a very strong Saturnian energy. So it is highly possible that that explains Aquarians kind of, um, they have less discomfort with the direct confrontation than the other air signs. Also kind of an interesting side note, it's like every Aquarian adult I know is fiscally conservative or works in finance or very interested in finance. And I kind of attribute that to the, the traditional co-rulership of Saturn as well. But it's just some interesting details to point out. But Aquarius is uh, under modern astrology ruled by Uranus, which is the revolutionary planet. And um, so it's the side most associated with revolutionary change. And you may think that's odd, it'd be it being a fixed energy sign, but in order to affect this radical long lasting change, you have to be fixed and set in your ideals to some way. You can't be all scattered like a Gemini that changes their mind every day. You have to have this fixed set of core beliefs. So that makes sense that the fixed energy um, it kind of informs the radical nature and, uh, and propensity of the sign to affect this 
long lasting change. But before I go on, Dominique, did you have anything you want to add since you're the Aquarius here? Oh yeah. I have lots of thoughts, of course. <laughs> good, good. Um, yeah. So as an Aquarius, I definitely know that there, and I tell different clients this too, Aquarian clients, that we have sort of the Saturnian Aquarian, and then you have the Uranian Aquarian, right? And you kind of fall in one or the other, technically, like you can lean one way or the other. And I've always, once I discovered that, I realized, oh yeah, I'm much more of a Saturnian Aquarian. I have some Gemini friends who are always like, you know, you're the like serious version of me. Like we could talk all day, but uh, there's like that childlike quality of Gemini. And then I'm like the parent, like you're the child, I'm the parent. <laughs> you're like, I'm more serious. Um, and I would have to say that learning about Aquarius and where it sits in my chart, you know, being in the eighth is like, I do like to go deep in particular areas that I feel really strongly or knowledgeable about, but I, I'm really curious. I mean, they're the, they're the, the student. I'm a perpetual student of life and the deeper meaning of life and just all the things like I'm curious. And I think I take that curiosity more seriously sometimes in a Gemini, you know, Gemini just wants a lot of information, wants to learn, is curious about exchanging stuff. But I'm like, I want to know stuff. And that's the difference, right? Aquarius wants to know stuff. So it's a little bit more intense and more serious. Um, so I totally agree with that. I do feel I'm more Saturnian. And in terms of the fiscally conservative, um, interestingly enough, I have had to work on my relationship with money and I handle the books in my home. I have an entire binder of like my bills and like what needs to go out. And I handle all of that. And I like handling that. Yeah. It makes me feel very like accomplished and like I have my stuff. It's empowering. Together. It's empowering. So I, but I am fiscally conservative. Like I'm not the spender in the family. <laughs> and, you know, my husband Mel, we used to make a joke and it always sits with me because um, I've always been a little, you know, more frugal with my money. I've had to be right. I grew up not having a lot and I made a lot out of what I had and we are more comfortable now, you know, having a partner and everything who has a great job. And whenever I serve him ice cream, he'd be like, serve it to me. Like you're not paying for it. <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm not serving it a little because it's expensive. I'm serving it because I don't want you to eat too much of it, but I, I hear you. That's hilarious. <laughs> you know, so I am fiscally conservative and um, I am a perpetual student. And even with the parenting, like as soon as I had a child, I was like, okay, I want to know. I want to know everything I possibly can about my child. And because I was on this personal growth journey and knowing myself, I knew instantly I was different and that this this tool was going to help me. Like, and I went right in, like all in, I want to know, I want to learn. And yeah, my, my analytical mind can get in the way because I am always in that trying to work it out, trying to figure it out and understand problem solver, problem solving. And so really we'll get into Pisces, but that's where it's really helped me to, um, to learn about myself and how to navigate um, and communicate with a, with a Pisces child when we're very different. Got you. That's all really good stuff. Yeah. Aquari <laughs> Aquarian adults, most of the ones I know do have, do seem to have this intensity about them. And some of them have kind of a strong Pluto or some strong eighth house planet. So it's hard to know if it's because of that or mm -hmm. it's because of something else. But I, I attribute yeah. it to, yeah, I mean, it definitely could be the eighth house stuff because that I think that that the Saturnian, yeah, I think that the Saturnian energy, that that um, heaviness can make it forceful. I right. you know Mercury often is in the same sign as the sun. And, and for me, it is. Okay. So I do have a little bit extra intensity in the placement when I speak. My moon and my Pluto's in an air sign. So okay. like or a power in that regard. Um, so yeah, I do think there's an intensity, but I think there's also a seriousness. It's it think, mm -hmm. to it, you know what I mean? And that's more Saturnian too. And even in the Uranian side, they want to buck the system. They want to rebel and make change. And that's a serious thing. You want to ask questions that make people think differently to, right. to, to make right. change in the world, right? Be the change you want to see in the world. It's like, right. sometimes you have to ask hard questions or have hard conversations or push the envelope or protest or whatever. So I right. do feel like that's part of the hev the heaviness or the intensity of a Korean energy right. because they really want to make change or, or improvements or make a difference. 
Exactly. And the fixed nature of the sign really comes out because mm-hmm. Aquarians I come across all, they have very strong core beliefs. And these are the, the least judgmental people I have ever met. Yeah. My sister, as you know, is Aquarius son, least judgmental people I've ever met. Like seriously, like my best friends are Aquarians and part of Lee, it's because of that. They're just totally non-judgmental, but they have these fixed core beliefs that they won't change, which is fantastic. Cause I love to see that. Because as you as you mentioned, it's <laughs> my energy. So we're constantly analyzing and taking data <laughs> and constantly coming to new conclusions. So to have people who are very strong in their core beliefs is very refreshing. So it's all good stuff. You yeah. know, live yeah. and let live is my motto. You right. know, I have exactly. my principles and my beliefs, but I will never put those on someone else. And even with astrology, this is an objective tool that we can use together to find solutions that work for you. It, even if they don't work for me or I, I do use a different tool or something different, you know, so it's, it's definitely like a live and let live. And I, I feel very strongly about how I've, what I've come to believe or how I, you know, live my life, Right. but I have no judgment about how other people live theirs. And I think that's part of the humanity, you know, of Aquarian energy. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The, the kind of the last yeah thing I want to bring up and, and I'm interested to see what you would add is that Aquarius is associated with the 11th house, which is the house mm-hmm. of kind of society, friendships, kind of fitting into society as a whole. And Aquarius is, is known and, you know, um, uh, logically so as an independent sign, it is a very independent sign, but it's always in relation to the group. Aquarians are always looking about, you know, the greater good, how, what they can do to help the greater good and how they can fit into society and fit into the greater good, right? Yeah. So it's an independent sign in relation to the group. I don't want to suggest that it's like a loner sign. It's not very much connected with yeah. society. Yeah. I think the loner part comes in is because Aquarians typically feel different. They yeah. just feel different and kind of like an oddball out or don't really fit a mold. And which I think over time and from a personal experience evolving into my really growing into my Aquarius energy is owning my different, you know, differences and, and being more proud of the idea of that. Hey, I love astrology. It's really interesting to be an astrologer as a more Saturnian conservative, like Aquarian, right. Who it's like, I, I don't like to break the rules. I don't necessarily want to um, ruffle feathers, but I I want to like provide some information that helps open people's perspectives, you know, Um, but also groups like feeling like you want to fit into a group and trying to, but ultimately struggling, always kind of feeling like an individual or like you don't fit entirely. And so that's, what's been really interesting and, and um, feeling like where my group is, you know what I mean? And even being a leader of a group, I want to be more of one of the group as I lead it, not, Hey, everybody look at me. I know all the answers, exactly. I have all the answers. It's like, Hey, we're in this together, but I'm going to help, you know, sort of guide exactly. us along or, you know, put, bring in information or ideas or thoughts or perspectives to make us all think so that we can all move forward together. You know, that like that kind of, you know, let's we're in this together thing. Um, but we're all kind of trying to find our way to fit in. You right. Know? Right. And we're all feeling that way. So you're not alone in feeling that. Yeah, exactly. And that's part of the humanity too, is realizing, Hey, like we're all just trying to fit in, just trying to find our people and and connect and and feel supported and understood and heard and seen and all those things. Right. I think for an Aquarius, it's just sometimes a little bit different because you feel innately like an outsider or like a weirdo sometimes, and you know, fit whether it's your family or your friends or so. And I always had friends from all walks. Like my friend group was so eclectic, it, eclectic, it still is. And I would bring friends together. So I would bring friends from different backgrounds or interests. Like I was sort of the networker in mm-hmm. that regard of bringing friends together from different, you know, perspectives and, and, um, you know, cultures, whatever. So yeah. I had a very eclectic group of friends and I was with everyone in high school, like everyone from the top of the class to the kids who barely graduated to, yeah cheerleaders and jocks and like I was friends with everyone that's and very, I loved yeah that. that's very strong Aquarius energy yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's they're just comfortable with everybody yeah and like the whole cross-section of society and that's like that's a wonderful thing it's like what I see with my Aquarian friends because that's just it's yeah they're definitely very strong Aquarius energy so yeah. speaking of society 
end the collective unconscious. We're going to get to Pisces and go over the general yes. traits of Pisces. And this is my first video on Pisces kids. This is going to be one of many videos. So we're not going to be able to touch on everything in detail, but we do want to give a general overview of Pisces energy. So Pisces is a feminine energy, a mutable water sign. So feminine energy um, means that it is a more of a self-contained, intuitive, mm -hmm. kind of passive energy as opposed to the masculine energy of Aquarius. So it is a self-contained energy as opposed to self-expressive or outwardly expressive. And that fact may make it challenging for parents of Pisces kids to kind of really get to the bottom of what the kids are all about. Fire sign people tend to wear their emotions on their sleeves. Air sign people, they can be cagey and indirect, but they're ultimately about <laughs> communication. Yeah. Especially Libra is very relationship oriented about good, uh, overall good communicating relationships. Yeah. But water sign children, very private, very internally focused. So the parent really has to work hard to kind of get to the bottom of what the kid's all about and what, if anything, is bothering the child to kind of get to the root of that. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, Pisces, yeah, we said Pisces approach the, the world more from a place of emotion, intuition, and feeling, very different from Aquarius. So you have to realize that about your Pisces child, they're not going to have the same method, that first line reaction of approaching situations as you would. And that's okay. You just have to know that about the sign. Yeah. Pisces is about collective healing. Of all the signs, it is the most connected to what, you know, Carl Jung calls the, the collective unconscious. Um, Pisces tends to be an introverted energy. We're going to talk about that a little bit more in detail later. That doesn't mean that all Pisces people test as introverts, but they do have a privacy about them. It is a healing sign. Pisces people, it is a very psychic sign, uh, naturally psychic. Um, Pisces have a strong capacity to heal others. Uh, almost all the water signs do, really. But Pisces people tend to ha be overwhelmed by these strong feelings of emotions and empathy that they have because they identify so strongly with the um, with the feelings of others. Before we go on, I want to talk a little bit more about a couple of things, but I want to get Dominique's thoughts on what we just talked about. Oh yeah, for sure. It's I think astrology has saved me in that regard because with all my air, when I realized my son was going to be a Pisces, I was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to communicate with this child? How am I going to really connect? And it was a concern for me, but I knew that I'd have to make adjustments. And I knew that astrology was going to help me understand, you know, that he did come from a different perspective and that he was going to be more uh, introverted or more in inside in his feeling nature and stuff. And so I definitely uh, immediately made adjustments. And so whenever I would try, be want to try and figure something out or communicate, I really had to stop and pay attention and give him time and comfort him. I remember when he was young and when there was just like this struggle, he just, I would just hold him because that was what really like the physical touch and just feeling safe and secure in whatever he was feeling and not making him have to explain it to me was really important, um, especially when he was young, you know? For sure. No, for sure. Like the, it's almost like you, you had to train yourself. I had to do this too, because my son's a Scorpio, as you know, to empathize first before yes. you try to fix things, right. Yep. And approach things logically. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I think you know, we can get into this more when, when you make the examples, but I definitely have helped him learn how to share his feelings. Right. Like that's where I think my gifts come in and sort of empathizing first and then helping him put his words or his feelings into words, you know, he would share things that, you know, and not be able to explain and get really kind of mm -hmm. frustrated that he can't explain what it is right. exactly. Right. And so I would give him that comfort, but then say, okay, like, let me try and see if I can understand this. And I would share something about what I interpreted him to be feeling. And he could say, oh, yes, that that's it. Yes. Yes. That's what I'm feeling that, you know, and yeah. that I think is where my air helps his waters. I totally. help to put his feelings into context and into words. And, you know, my husband will like, let him talk, let him talk. And I'm like, I'm not trying to talk for him. It's that we've had this conversation right. and I'm helping him understand how to share his feelings and it's not easy. So you have to give him space and time to share it. Mm -hmm. um, and really that safe place where he can he can really um, feel comfortable, you know, um, opening up and sharing his feelings. Oh, sure. Because he, and he may not understand 
or be able to articulate as a child this just the depth of feeling he has yes. or yes. this identifying with other people's emotions uh, yes. that's that's so that's that you're helping him learn to articulate that because when you can articulate the feelings identify them you know you feel better it's a no it's emotionally more healthy Absolutely. right yeah so um right as as we said pisces energy it's an energy that kind of has love for everyone deep kind of love and empathy for everyone my sister has a interestingly uh venus and mars and pisces that's how she is she loves everybody <laughs> <laughs> which is great and we're going to talk a little bit more about boundaries um more yeah. uh more in detail um, and pisces as we know is associated with the 12th house which is kind of an open gate and the 12th house is a house a lot of people are afraid of because there's a lot we probably still don't understand about it but it is identified with kind of the open gate the spiritual plane other planes of reality the spirit world if you will that's how some people characterize it so this is partly what makes what gives Pisces this deep sensitivity and also partly what makes Pisces people feel kind of cribbed or confined by this material plane of existence. And that is what Pisces people seek. They're seeking soul fulfillment. They're not going to be fulfilled emotionally or otherwise by any ego centric pursuits. You know, fire sign people are a little bit more ego oriented, not a bad thing. It's good to advocate for yourself. It's good to put yourself first, not a bad thing. Pisces people are not going to be fulfilled by these kind of more ego oriented or material pursuits. They're always seeking some kind of fulfillment beyond themselves and beyond this material plane of existence. Um, and that is partly what, what makes Pisces people feel so different is they don't always enjoy what other people appear to enjoy. Even people enjoying those pursuits sometimes don't enjoy them, but yeah. they, they make them feel very different. And we did want to bring up there's there is a tendency with Pisces because of that feeling and that inclination toward escapism. And some escapism is healthy. You know, you watch an hour of your favorite show, you play a couple two hours of your favorite video game, you read a fiction novel to kind of get your mind off things. That's healthy. But yes. binge watching for ten hours unhealthy, pathological. Video gaming for eight hours straight unhealthy. So there is a point when the escapism becomes too much, and the onus and responsibility is on the parent to know to identify that and educate and talk to the Pisces child about you know what what are you escaping from, what is going on with you, what is bothering you, and Pisces people, um, you know, seek all kinds of different methods of fulfillment, and this is where parents can help. Sometimes spirituality, music, arts. Um, I'm uh, I'm gonna get Dominique to chime in here for in a second. But my my stepfather, who's a Pisces son, he's an accomplished musician, and you know, performing you know in music performances or just by himself or watching live performances is almost like a spiritual practice for him because he identifies so strongly with the music. So these are this is these are the things that Pisces people are really compelled to seek on a soul level the fulfillment on a soul level and whether that's spending time in nature, art, music, religion, spirituality. And on that note, you know, I don't tell, I'm not going to tell anybody what to practice religion wise or spiritual wise, but it is, you know, fine to share spiritual concepts or ideas, or even your practice with your Pisces child, because you're going to be so interested in that. And I'm going to have Dominique, you know, provide some other further insight, maybe some examples for us on that topic. Oh yeah. 12th house is so rich and so deep and so big and <clears throat> so important for the Pisces child. And yes, on so many levels, um, first and foremost, yes, my Pisces son was very, I felt you know how the veil is very thin when they're young, but with Pisces, it's just like sort of always that way. He was always saying, you know, I'm so glad, you know, I'm here with you. There was always a sense of like a spiritual connection. And his, um, his aunt gave him a little um, prayer pillow when he was young. He still says that prayer every night <clears throat> before he goes to sleep, an angel, <clears throat> an angel prayer. And <clears throat> yeah, we've, We've talked about those bigger concepts and, and he believes in angels. We believe in angels and, and we've talked about that. And in terms of when I knew he was a, a, when I found out he was going to be a Pisces and he was, a, um, was born, I was like, oh boy, like this escapism thing or this, you know, who his friends are or what he surrounds himself with or what he's into, you know, I was going to be very aware of that. And this, um, also this creative side and how could I help, you know, fulfill that or support that. And, and I gave him lots of options. Like when we were young, when he was young, we went to, to mommy me music class. 
which was so fun. And he loved music. He loved to sing and dance. And, and it was so fun for us because it was something, a way for us to bond. And he just soaked it up, loved it, loved it, loved it. And then when he got older, I realized, oh, he really likes to draw. And I was like, well, do you want to take an art class? He's like, sure. So then he was in art for two years and he nice. really did well. And he has a lot of skills and a lot of natural talent that I don't know if came from like my grandpa or just innately because he was Pisces or both, probably both. But um, so I always kept that open, you know, in terms of whatever he's interested in. And I always taught him like to explore the things that that he really enjoyed. And when he got older and he really through the pandemic, we really got into gaming and stuff. It was more initially for a social outlet. But I realized there's a lot in that. Like it is a, a as long as it's curtailed to a certain amount there's a healthy uh escape in there it's, it's another world and even in minecraft creating other worlds he loves creating other worlds and you know and that's led to him having an interest in potentially engineering which is also creative and inventive and you know that kind of thing so i'm seeing it evolve as he grows up but it's foundationally the same thing you know, this, this uh, creative, creative expression and the escapism for him, you know, and for Pisces is, has to be maintained because it is good. They need that, you know, having, when he got upset, when he was little, he needed to be, you know, alone with his snuggly or just a hug before he talked about anything. And then he'd be like, I'm, I'm ready to talk about this. You know, his Pisces in the 11th. So he will express and talk once he's ready, but he does still have that, um, that fear and he doesn't like to upset or he wants to you know everybody to get along he cares about everybody he that's another thing is helping him understand that he can have his feelings and doesn't have to change them to fit a situation or to you know to fit um what he thinks other people want you know so there's um there's a lot that's the thing is like the pies are so much and he is so feeling i've definitely taught him from a young age about his emotions and his lovely ability to feel so much and to be so open and to how to protect himself, you know, and to really create those healthy boundaries in terms of like, just because, um, you know, you feel a certain way. A great example of this is when he was young, I really wanted to teach him how to trust his own instinct and that uh oh feeling. You teach kids, you know, when something's not right, you get that uh oh feeling. Well, I would take him to different preschools and I would see how he responded to them. And I would ask him after how he felt about it and if he wanted to go there. And I went to one preschool twice to do different things um, to check out stuff. And both times he said he didn't want to go there. And then I took him to another school and he instantly was like loving it. This is where I want to be. I knew it. And I tell him that story even now as an example to say, look, that's what you learn to trust in yourself. That is you knowing what is right and good and true for you. And so honing that for him so that when he gets in relationships or in scenarios where he's taking in all this inf information and energy that he can say, okay, wait, that's not my stuff, you know, right. this, this me. And, and that's the, the thing I think I work the most at and trying not to overanalyze and overthink it right. and over communicate it, but how to really help him regulate all of that. Mm -hmm. in a healthy way and go, Hey, look, it's good to be on here and separate. I know the world is, you know, an ugly place. There's a lot going on. Um, and this is good, but only so much of it. And even emotional eating, right. Right. Eating because he feels a certain way or whatever. So I always tell him, look, are you really hungry? Are you eating because you're this or that? So there's a lot of those kinds of things that I'm always keeping in mind right. as I observe his behavior and try to help him help give him the tools right to navigate all that stuff right because i'm not in his body i i get into pisces season because i have venus in pisces and pisces in mid and so whenever oh, we wow. get into pisces season i really try to like settle into that and this i think is a really interesting tip for parents who have pisces kids when we're in pisces season really lean into how that feels for you right? Or when Mercury's in Pisces, how does that feel for you? What are the struggles you're having in communicating or, you know, dealing with things or how are you feeling in, in relationship with other people? Because that's how your child is living. Your child is living in that energy. 
right? So that overwhelm Mm -hmm. that comes in and you're like, I can't think straight and that frustration that can be indicative of the, of the toughness Mm -hmm. that's between you and how you can relate. And also you get a taste of their world, right? What it's like to, to be in Pisces season where it's dreamy and uh, like, you know what I mean? And you can really lean into that and be like, Oh, wow. Or it's emotional, or it feels like there's so much uh, to handle, you know, right. Right. So this is what your child is living in. And you're thinking, how in the heck are they doing that? Because you're, <laughs> you right. know, you're not, but that's where I feel like we can really learn. Okay. How do I manage in that season? My child lives in that season. So how can I help them, right. you know, manage and regulate and give them the tools to manage that energy and make the most of the beautiful things that can come from that energy and not want to escape the world or, right. you know, learning how to keep commitments and, and be um, honest about how they're feeling. Right. Right. You know, so I could go on and on. So keep going. No problem. <laughs> so, I mean, but you're like perfectly positioned to help him do that because you're a, with your Aquarian energy, you're able to step outside of yourself and look at things from a detached point of view. Right. Water sign people have a hard time doing that because of the nature yeah. of water. It's just, I do the same for my kid. And, and as a result, you know, they've learned to be, these yeah. kids learn to be, you know, learn to recognize what they're feeling. And to the your point about, you know, developing his, helping him develop his intuition. I love hearing that because, you know, kids have such, their develop, their intuition is so spot on when they're younger because they're not, they haven't had these experiences yet in the world, which, and these filters through which yeah. they're filtering the intuition, or they haven't had people second guessing their decision making right. and a lot of times what i see is parents when the kid seems uncertain the parents are quick especially the moms to jump in and make decisions for the kid you don't want to do that all the time you want to help the children develop their own intuition look this is up to you if you need extra time to make a decision here or mm-hmm. you know, decide what to do here you can take extra time but you want to be really careful about making decisions for the kids and a lot of parents are quick to step in yeah. and it comes from a place of wanting to help but right. ultimately you're almost handicapping them because you know you yes. don't want them to grow up questioning their own intuition when they have somebody they're interacting with who frankly may not have their best interest in mind. Yes. So that stuff is just pre- like yeah. essentially important. Yeah. Yeah, and I would add one more thing about um and I think this is key and I share it because I don't know if other Aquarius parents or parents of Pisces children come across this but being so sensitive physically, emotionally, and everything. When my child describes something that they're feeling in terms of an illness or like a a symptom of something, oftentimes it will scare me. You know, I'm like, what? Right. So the way that they're describing how they're feeling, I'm like, what, what is it? Right. And my analytical mind wants to start Googling stuff and what have you and really trusting, say, okay, I, I, he would get upset with me because I would start to think something was really wrong. And he's like, no, no, it's, it's not bad. I'm like, okay, so we have to make this agreement that when you're feeling a certain way, if I don't, I have to say, okay, are you, do we need to see the doctor? Right. <laughs> and if you know, it's really bad or it's really off and you're feeling really off in some way mm-hmm. and a doctor needs to, you know, check things out. You say, yes, I want to go to the doctor. Otherwise, if you're just, you know, because they absorb so much, yeah. they don't know really, they can't really identify with it. And we had one, um, and going to the doctor can help him also settle because that can create anxiety within him and fear and and uncertainty in him. And he had a fever one time that was really high and we had given him some fever medicine. And then he was telling me that he, like, he was using these weird phrases about, oh, things are like speeding up or like, Mm. and I was like, what is going on? And, and, um, I don't know. It's like, things are moving. I'm not moving, but I feel things are moving. And I was like, <laughs> well, like psychedelics, right? I'm yeah, thinking yeah. like, well, I started Googling weird things he was saying and came across something called tachysensia. Huh. They call it the Alice in Wonderland syndrome, oh, yeah. which is very oh, Pisces. Wow. Yeah, but yeah. It has to do with, and can often happen when some, after a child has had an infection or a high fever or right. something, Right. You know, and it, it, it's like a, a lapse in time. Or right. Space, right. And I'm thinking, do only Pisces people have this? Like, is this something, you know what I mean? But it was really interesting that this, sens- that the sensation was described was very Piscean. Yeah. It said that when it continues, um, like 
if we get anxiety, anxiety about it or get fearful about it, it can continue longer or mm. exacerbate it. So understanding it, we mm-hmm. can calm take right. a breath. It will pass. Right. And so as soon as we knew, as soon as we could put a name to it and he had something he could do to manage it, it, it went away. First yeah. of all, it went away, I think because of the infection, but right. then also I said, let me know every time this happens. And I started logging every time it happened. And then we could see that it had faded away. And also he knew what to do if it came again. And I would just say, you know, trust your child to say, Hey, whatever you're feeling, you know, communicate it with me. And if you're a strong air parent like me, where you're like, what the heck you're like Googling, be very careful, you know, because they do feel so many things and you worry that something really bad is going to, is going on when it's not, they're just so sensory. Exactly. And, and like to airside people, things have to make logical sense. Right. And if you're trying to make logical sense about concepts that are intuitive and, and, you know, not, you know, not concrete, they're more nebulous. It's, you're going to be very frustrated. So and scared. Right. So to your point, you know, listen to your child and definitely, you know, don't negate their experiences. I would certainly not say, oh, you're just whatever, you know, right. you know, bypassing it, you know, just waving it away and not showing any concern about it. You don't have to necessarily, like you said, be concerned that this is something serious, but okay, that's interesting. Tell me more about this. Yes. Let's make a note of when this is occurring and see maybe if we can see to find out if you can get some relief, like that's the appropriate, you know, right. answer. So yeah, all yeah. this is all really good stuff. Yeah. Really good stuff. <laughs> Um, we are going to talk about boundaries with a Pisces child. Very important. So with water sign uh-huh. people, the nature of water tends to blur the boundaries yeah. with the other person, in the relationship. So where, you know, the one person ends, the other person begins, right? So, you know, this, this leads Pisces people to have this deep empathy and identification with the other person in the relationship, which is great. It promotes attachment and yeah. connection. So, but for the Pisces person, the, the one thing that the Aquarian parent could do, which is a real gift, is help them teach, is help them learn healthy boundaries, right? And this yeah. is very important because as the kids grow up and the Pisces child becomes a Pisces adult, you want them to have healthy boundaries, right, with other people. That's um, it's a big problem a lot of adults have, not just Pisces people. True. <laughs> so, um, and if they, you know, if they don't, if they have poor boundaries and if they're, uh, you know, let themselves um, identify too much with the other person to the, to the result of kind of suppressing their own wants and needs. Obviously that sets them up, you know, for some unfulfilling and hard times in relationships as an adult. Well, that's what we want to avoid. We want yes. them to be, you know, to emotionally protect themselves. Right. So the, we want to definitely teach the Pisces child that they are worthy of giving and receiving love. And this having this great love and sense of love for other people in the world is a wonderful thing. And we also want to teach them to have these healthy boundaries. And one of the best way that the parent can do that is for the parent to have healthy boundaries themselves, which air sign people are very good at because of this kind of natural inclination for detachment. They're pretty good in general about having these boundaries. So you have healthy boundaries, you model the healthy boundaries for yourself, right? With your child and respect your child's boundaries. If they don't want to be touched, if they don't want to be hugged, if they're having sensory overwhelm, you, the parent needs to recognize that and respect the child's physical and also emotional boundaries. Like Dominique, you were saying, you know, when you're ready to talk, you can talk. Don't force them to talk about something if they're not ready to do it. That's, you know, violating their boundaries. So those are all (laughs) really yes. important things. So they, that providing that example, the adult having the healthy boundaries, right. And taking, you know, the healthy boundaries for themselves and also respecting the child's boundaries is eventually going to teach the Pisces child. These are, this is what a healthy relationship looks like. And this is the model I'm going to bring in into adulthood. Yeah. So. And it, yeah, I totally with- agree. I remember when Joe was little, like he is definitely like a, a lover, a hugger, you know, a toucher. We, we definitely, I think the water, <clears throat> we bonded, you know, I'm a cancer rising. We definitely have a strong bond. And I would have to say in terms of boundaries, like it, I didn't always do great. I mean, I, in, in, um, when he was young, because we were so bonded that I'm realizing now that this is, I really have to separate because, you know, we, we were, we co-slept, we like, we still like to snuggle and watch shows together. And so there is this bond and this really strong attachment that I am like, okay, I worry that, 
it's going to become like harder for him to separate. And it's, you know, and then I trust that naturally he will. I know there's pluses to co-sleeping or I have pluses to, you know, that attachment, but also recognizing that he's, you know, trying to empower him, that he doesn't need me. He just, we have, we like to be together and we like this connection, but you don't need me. That's the difference. You know, you're a big boy and they, and that's certain age there. It's harder, I think, for Pisces kids to make that separation of, you know, as they naturally grow up, we start, they start to recognize they're separate from their parents. And that's, I think that's harder for Pisces children. They feel so connected to, to us, you know, to parents that, and that safety and security that it's makes it scarier to go out in the world. Right. So in empowering them that they've got this, you know, trust, learning to trust their intuition and having boundaries, but also that touching feeling part of them. I noticed he would have, uh, he had a good friend who was always like, stop touching me, stop touching me. <laughs> like, yeah. like, as we get angry, yeah. he's going to bug it or like, stop touching me. Like, and you know, he's a hugger. He'd be like, what's up bud, you know, and whatever. But then he would always be like touchy feely, like anything he was doing. So I would have to explain to him, look like, you have to respect other people's boundaries. Right. I know you are a toucher. I know you, you know, right. you care and it's all with the best of intentions, but you have to respect other people's boundaries right. and then create your own. So there's like a physical and an emotional, you know, because he does take on the feelings of his friends and he started to have some, you know, he's a, a little older now and some issues with friends and like miscommunications. And I think I've had to explain to him how he is sensitive he mm-hmm. takes things on and it's because he has high expectations. He cares so much right. that he's easily let down yeah. and hurt, you know, and if he was really kind and loving and considerate and that's not shown back to him, he's really hurt, you know? And so I have to explain to him his sensitivity and not everybody is the same and mm-hmm. that's okay. Mm-hmm. And for him to protect himself. And I was reminded this morning and I reminded him of this because he's been having these troubles, right. Or these sort of growing pains, I should say, right. That when he was little, he learned in preschool and he did a little video about it that comes up every once in a, again, once in a while. But he said, when someone says something really, you know, mean to you or hurts your feelings, you just throw it in the trash throw it in trash. Right. If somebody says something nice or really sweet to you or is good to you, you scoop it up and you put it in your heart. That's right. <laughs> you know, and it's like, that's bad. This is good. Right. And, and really just knowing how to discern. And I reminded him of that this morning. And he was like, oh yeah. I was like, do you remember that? He's like, kind of. And I was like, so this is what I'm telling you. Like, protect yourself. It's okay. People aren't always going to respond the way you want them to. Right. They're not going to behave the same way. They're not going to care as much as you right. do, you know, and that's okay. You have to still accept that about them right? and protect yourself and your feelings and know that you don't have to take it all on and you don't have to beat yourself up. Right. You know, and that's, that's the hardest thing is self-belief. There's a big thing yeah. about in Pisces about believing in yourself. And we all as humans are working to believe in ourselves. Mm-hmm. But I feel like Pisces, their whole journey is to know themselves and right. believe in themselves and not right. seek that outside themselves. Or, you know, they're such a part of everything. They feel everything. They are about that one, you know, mm-hmm. one um, collective, right? Which is so beautiful, but it's like to survive in this world, you have to know what's yours and, and right. what's not. And, right. and believe that you're just find the way you are. Self-belief is huge. So I think right now, that's one of the things I'm working on is really helping him learn to believe in himself mm-hmm. and feel empowered in who he is mm-hmm. and not limited in any way. You know, it's just different. Kids are different. They feel different. They share things differently. They relate differently. Mm-hmm. And I'm teaching him how to communicate about himself to his friends. Right. Right. So it's okay to share with your friends, hey, when you do this, you know, when you, when you tease, I tease back and, and I'm okay with it, but you're not okay when I do it back. It hurts my feelings. And right. then I feel this, right. you know, right. They're, right. I said to him the other day, do you seem to you match people's feelings, you know, like, or their energies, or do you feel you adapt to fit, to fit them? Or do you come into a situation and feel that people are matching you? Yeah. And I think that's an interesting kind of experiment yeah. for kids that, 
water kids to do Mm -hmm. like when they're in a group or watch them do they immediately match the energy of the room Mm -hmm. or do they come in with their own energy and do you see kids kind of coming to them and adapting to their energy that's a great question because Pisces is mutable so they're adaptable Right. So I feel he can do both. And I try to empower him to recognize when he comes into a group, if he gets worked up and is meeting these kids at Mm -hmm. where they're at, or when it's time to settle in a classroom or settle and and focus and not be distracted, Mm -hmm. can he hold that? Right. You know, and then be an example for other kids. Right. And I think that's one of the most important lessons for all kids, especially for water sign kids is, you know, you don't have to let other people's emotions affect you. If right. you're having a good day so far and somebody comes in and is having a crappy day, you don't have to let that affect you. And right. the kids, because Pisces kids in particular want to please the parents so badly and they're so connected to the parents. If the parents are in like a really bad mood, the Pisces child will take on the energy and be in oh, a yeah. bad mood. And, you know, I've had this conversation with my son, the Scorpio, and like, you know, just because I'm in a bad mood, it has nothing to do with you. Yeah. And you don't have to be in a bad mood. Likewise, I mean, he's a scorp. He's like, you know, he, a lot of negative energy, <laughs> but you know, I don't have to let that affect my good day. If you're mad yeah. about something, I don't have to let that affect me. And I, you know, I would, when my son was very young, I, said, I would take on that energy. And if he was suffering, I felt like I was suffering Same. and I can be upset for him. And I can, you know, my heart can, you know, be tugged at for him. You know, heartstrings can be pulled yeah. for him, but I don't have to let it affect me emotionally it's the observe, don't absorb, right? And as an Aquarius, you're perfectly positioned to teach your son that because, you know, with the analytical mind, you can observe things Mm -hmm. and observe emotional responses, but not absorb it, right? So that's that's a great lesson for him. Yes, that's essentially what you're doing, yeah. I've done that same thing and I'd be like, I'm in a good mood and he's all Mm -hmm. emotional and everything. And I'm like, oh man, you're Mm -hmm. messing with my vibe. You know what I mean? I get irritated. And then I try to change his mood and it's like not working, you know, so I'm just like, you know, or the other way around. It's a great example and, and um, definitely working on that (laughs) for sure. We have our moments, right? And I, and um, yeah, I had another example I was going to share with you, but I can't remember what it is now. Maybe it'll come to me. Oh, for sure. Just jump in. Whatever you're remembering, just jump in. No problem. Um, yeah. So uh, kind of piggybacking on the boundaries issue, the empathy, which we've mm-hmm. talked about a lot. So when, you know, it's all obviously a primordial to teach your Pisces child healthy empathy, or should I say reinforce empathy because mm-hmm. they're naturally, you know, have this great empathy for yeah. people. But and we've already talked about this to a, a, you know, to a great extent, like the observe, don't absorb uh, feelings. Yeah. Um, Pisces kids feel, you know, they can feel overwhelmed and fatigued by what they're observing and the feelings oh, yeah. they're having, all that stuff that we've already talked That's what about. I was going to say, so yeah. when we ask him if he wants to do something, there's like, do you really want to play baseball this season? You know, there's this hesitation. They're like, why are you hesitating? And it's mm. because he doesn't want to let dad down. He doesn't want to let us down. He, did, he, the bond that him and dad share over baseball, he doesn't want to. So there was, it's really hard for him. Like he really wants to do it, but he's worried about being good enough. And, mm. and, and he's, we're trying to empower him, but it's like, okay, let's go season by season it's not up to us. We're support you no matter what, but because it's become this thing that we do as a family where we used to coach, you know, dad would coach him and I was team mom. It was this really great thing that has created a bond and, um, that we all love. And so it's a big change. Right. 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 But this week in school, they had, um, like sort of like auditions for like a, a, a singing group or something or something they were doing like a club they were going to do at school and the teacher um that they did auditions for everyone had to sing individually and like as a group and he came back and said that the teacher had said um that he had this really great voice and that he should do it right and I was like oh that's so great you used to love to sing he's like I'm not doing it Uh, okay and he was like He's like, yeah, I, and I don't, I would try to get him to sing for me. He didn't want to. I was like, it's cool. He's like, I'm, I'm not doing it. He's like, I play baseball. I, I don't want to be in the club, you know? And I was like, okay. So the next day I said, look, I just want to explain something to you. I just want to revisit something real quick. I said, do you know how you were very clear yesterday about what you didn't want to do? You were sure. Yeah, I can sing. I like music, but no, I don't want to be in that group. 
you were clear. And even when I said, oh, you love to sing, you used to sing all the time, you were clear and you mm-hmm. stuck to that. Mm-hmm. I said, that is what you need to always do. Yeah. You knew what you wanted, what you didn't want it. You stated it clearly, you were confident in it and you stuck to it. Mm-hmm. Remember that moment, right? Because every choice you make should be that clear for you. And it's okay. Doesn't matter what other people, you know, want for you or think you might be good at, or you need to be clear. And that's all me and dad want you to feel about baseball. When you're done with it, you're done with it. We're okay. We want you to do it because you love it, because you get out of it. Right. And when it's not to please other people, not to please us, you know? And I understand the bond that we've created as a family and you've created with dad, but you're not going to lose dad if you don't play baseball anymore. He's right, your dad. Right, he's always right. there. You're going to have other things you guys right. do together. And right. so he's starting to make that correlation. But I thought it was really important at that moment to point out how clear he was for himself and that he stuck to that decision. Right. And remember this moment. I thought it was a really important moment for him. And he and he felt really good when I pointed that out. He was like, yeah, yeah. And yeah. he felt really good about it. And like, yeah. I, I could see that it re- registered and he's yeah. Gonna, for that that's fantastic feeling more confident in in himself and knowing and trusting himself so if you have little moments like that that you realize are teachable even go back to it the next day like if it hits you later like Mm -hmm. oh wow that was that was actually kind of big revisit it yeah you know and share it again and and reaffirm that to build that confidence and that trust in their instincts and their and their knowing what's right for them and what's true for them oh absolutely that's all great stuff like and that and that's kind of brings me like our next big point which is you know ensure your pisces child feels comfortable and safe communicating with you right Mm -hmm. and like we said earlier like you're an air sign person things have to make logical sense even feelings feelings have to make logical sense to us but they don't (laughs) air sign parents have to learn that sometimes emotional responses don't make logical sense but that doesn't mean they're not valid you cannot control how people feel you don't have you know, dominion over their emotional experiences. Yeah. So you got to, you know, as you're saying, Dominique, validate the Pisces child's emotional experience. Don't say things like, you know, you should not feel that way. Why do you feel that way? Say things like, um, you know, I understand why you feel that way. You are completely right to feel that way. Is there anything you want to talk I about? I don't understand. Yeah. But share with me more about how right. you feel. Right. Or because like, oftentimes I don't quite understand and I need more. Right. You know? And that's totally fair. Like yeah. I, you know, tell me more about this yes. or I, I'm not, I think what you're saying is this, but I'm not sure I understand right. fully. Like, can that's you, what I do. are you ready to talk more about this? And if they're not ready, they're not ready right. to tell them that's when you say, I'm sorry, I'm here to talk when you're ready. Boom. The end. That's it. That's, right. And you can either hang around them and comfort them, or if they want to be alone, give them some solitude. So right. that's, you know, um, Pisces people most of the time crave uh, crave moments of solitude. You don't want to re- emotionally overreact when they tell you things, even if they tell you something kind of dramatic or bad. Maybe they were bullied at school, and of course you're like Mama Bear. You want to do something, but you got to listen to them first, mm-hmm. talk to them, and then you could figure out how to address yeah. things. But mm-hmm. if you're going to be emotionally overreacting, that's okay. very triggering to a very sensitive Pisces kid, like parents who raise voices, yell, even if you're doing yes. it for a place of passion about the subject, okay. that's triggering for a Pisces child. And you want to make sure they feel comfortable and safe talking to you and they can count on your the stability of you know, your emotional experience and you're not overreacting. Absolutely. That Yes. Two things that jumped out at me. I remember my son telling us one time that he was so glad that me and my husband, like that we weren't a family that fought, that we didn't fight. He's like, I think I would feel be very different person yeah. if it, and I said, yeah, because you affect by energy. And if we're always fighting and yelling and screaming, you shut down. I remember a couple of times when I was, when he was young, if I yelled at him, like he just shuddered and like shut yeah. down. I was like, Oh, red flag. So there was no high voices. We don't yell. It's, you know, we have moments you know, we, bad reactions. We apologize yeah, absolutely you know, for sure. Um, but I will touch on one thing about Pisces that may have been a point you were going to get to, but I think is important is, is a shadow side in terms of victimhood. Hmm. And when you said speaking about something dramatic that happened at school and being very emotional, right. And sharing the experience and realizing 
you know, in my logical brain going, okay, he's, he is playing a little bit of the victim here. Mm -hmm. Like it's the poor me and that kind of thing. And really, and I, and I have that, everyone works with that own victim mentality. And I definitely worked at it personally. And I'm like, I hate being the victim. I hate feeling like the victim. And so I've worked at it and I can see it when it happens, I get triggered Mm -hmm. and I want to very delicately, when you can recognize when your child tells you a story, you uh, what happened, you really want to support their experience of it, but also recognize they have to take responsibility mm-hmm. for their role in how they responded mm-hmm. or what they did when you say, oh, well, I did this and I made a joke and, da, 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 and then they did that and they were this and that. And I'm like, okay, can we move back to the very mm-hmm. first thing you told me about what you did mm-hmm. or what you said? And you got upset because of the way they responded you know, or they, like, for example, they responded differently than they made a joke and about you and you laughed it off, but then they, you make a joke about them and they get angry. And all of a sudden, I understand your frustration with it, not being like an even playing field, Mm -hmm. but you have to recognize what you did, Mm -hmm. you know, and say, you're sorry for that. He, he just resolved an issue with a friend where the friend finally said, you know, you just, you made it bigger than it needed to be. Right. That's what the kid told him. Like yeah. you went around telling everybody and like <clears throat> upset about it and made it mm-hmm. big, dramatic. And that upset the kid and made him feel embarrassed and down. And so he was ignoring him. And Joseph was really upset and cried because his kid was ignoring him. But Joseph was the one making it bigger. Right. He needed to be. And I was really proud that the kid told him that. And he learned that lesson. He could say he was sorry. A good life lesson for sure. Huge. But there is this sort of like when he doesn't understand something at school Mm -hmm. after his homework and he's upset because he doesn't get, I'm like, well, did you ask questions? Well, she said this or that, but I I thought I I, know. And she didn't do this and she didn't explain it right. And she, and I'm like, okay, look, they're doing a lot of pointing that this person didn't do what they should have done. And it's their fault. And you have to take responsibility. Yes. You didn't ask a question. You didn't get clear on it. Mm-hmm. Write it down, you right. know, whatever you have to do. But there's a little bit of that. Like it's always somebody else's fault. Right. For right. Why I feel the way I feel or why I'm right. I have to say, okay, look, I, right. It's not always you're responsible for your, for what you, you know, yourself, your responses for your emotions about something right. why you're upset because right hey I'm upset because I didn't pay attention I didn't listen or I didn't hear I wasn't clear about what she said and I didn't ask a question that's different than saying she didn't explain it right right when I'm not in the classroom right. I don't know that you didn't you don't listen, know but at the same time I have to give that moment of saying look it can't always be somebody else's fault you have to take responsibility you know right right when you know as a Pisces, their chances are they're missing information, right? Right. I mean, they absorb, but you know, they don't necessarily like logically get it or remember it later. You know, why am I have to do this? I know this. Well, because you absorbed it and you got it, but you have to practice it. That's part of school. Right. You know, so there's a lot of those kinds of things that I think come in with working with Pisces energy that can be difficult for parents in general and for an Aquarian parents who's like, okay, let's logically look at this, but right. definitely taking responsibility for their reactions yeah. and their emotions and right self-regulating, I think is important to teach them as well so that it's, they don't fall too far into that poor me victim. Every the world is bad and it's coming down on me and poor me. Right. Right. This is how happening to me. Right. Right. Yeah. And it's, you know, since Pisces is a feminine energy, more passive sign they can certainly benefit from learning to stand up for themselves. Yes. You know, I, and that's, that's like where you come in, like, well, you need to ask questions. It's okay to ask clarifying questions. Right. Yep. So that's, yeah, all that stuff. And I was thinking about, as you were talking, you know, Pisces is so much about vulnerability too. Mm-hmm. And that's great in relationships. You'd be vulnerable with the other person in the relationship that makes for a fulfilling, one of the things that makes for a fulfilling relationship but right, the vulnerability aspect, if taken too far, can result in this right. poor me. I'm a victim. Everybody's out to get me. Well, if you believe that, guess what? Yeah, it's going to be true. <laughs> yeah, you're going to manifest. If you believe more that, that's what you're going to manifest. But instead, if you come from a place of power, right? Empowered, and well, I didn't understand this, but I'm going to ask questions and I'm going to ask my parents for help if I don't get this. I'm going to be vulnerable enough to say I need help, 
right? right. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. It's, you can be vulnerable with the people you care about. And part of the experience of parenting the Pisces child is teaching them that it is okay to be vulnerable and ask for help. Yes. Perfectly yes. fine. In fact, Absolutely. we encourage you to ask for help if you need it. Absolutely. You so, want them yeah. to, you don't want them to escape into a hole or to, you know, right. something that, that they don't have the, the ability to communicate what they're struggling with. Right. You know, it's that clarification. So yeah, be vulnerable. It's okay. If you're struggling with something, right. ask for help. And that's what I'll tell them. Do you need help? But when we get into it, you can't be blaming why something's not, you know, you're not getting something or, you know, flipping the script on, on somebody, you know, I think it's just right. something to be aware of. And I think that, um, even the emotional energy of, you know, the, of a Pisces child and you have air parent is being okay with their emotions, you yeah. know, and even like male, female being a boy and being emotional, being more sensitive, you know, and not being afraid to cry or share his, himself in that way, you know, try and I don't want to shut down that right. beautiful part of him. And I think yeah. that's important for boys as well. Here, Pisces, I think it's very different between girls and boys. My niece is also a Pisces. Oh, wow. And it's very different, very different energy, um, for sure. And, um, but yeah, I think there are differences still in, in, um, in gender as well, but just to not shut down that emotion and teaching my husband, like, look, you have a sensitive son. You know? Exactly. And the cool thing is, is that he helps him. I help him learn to manage that. But at the same time, together, we do help him learn how to stand up for himself, to know himself and to, and feel confident in sharing what that is. He came home and said, well, I explained to my friends why, I, you know, a little bit more about who I am and, oh. and why I, I act the way I do. Yeah. And that's so awesome that you're able to speak yeah. that and share yourself like that. I said, because I, yeah. he came out at the other, the other day of his room and he was like, you know, I think my goal is to like in life. And I was like, Oh, this is going to be big is to be, is to be the best person I possibly can, oh. you know, like to yeah. just be a good person. And right. I was like, Oh my gosh, you're breaking my heart. I love, yeah. it. you know, and awesome. like you said, it wasn't even about a job. Like you said, it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't about a, a traditional job. It's like, I emotional thing. Like, I just want to be a good person. I want that soul fulfillment. Right. And I think a big part of that is believing in himself right. and, and having really good relationships and people around him that love and accept him for who he is. And he can that empower that self-belief, you know, right? and really knowing himself, being self-aware of that, like, this is who I am. Right. And taking that forward as he grows up into an adult and yeah. has all these interactions with people. Like I know myself, I know who I am and I am true to myself. Yeah. It's like the biggest gift. Yeah. Like I know who I, where I came from. I know who I am. I know, you know, and to understand the ourselves in terms of what is, you know, what our strengths and our weaknesses are, you know, and that's why yeah. I tell him even his imagination, when you get into the Pisces imagination, I say, you have this great imagination and all of these amazing things, you know, come up through your creativity and what you want to do and your costumes for Halloween, like all this stuff. I said, but do you find that that very same ability to create in your mind also can send you into these, down these rabbit holes of fear and imagining worst case scenarios or imagining, you know, things that are scary. You know what I mean? There's, there's two sides of that, you know, where you get or the mind movie gets going so yeah. much. We have these, uh, these fears that are unrealistic right? because his imagination is so yeah. big. So yeah. It's really understanding the power of your imagination for good or bad. Absolutely. And, and your energy, you know, directing yeah. it for good or bad. So right. I think it's, it's a, it's an evolution. And I mean, he's only 11. He's got a long way. Oh to go yeah. There. Yeah. I'm really proud of how he's, you know, no, that's fantastic. It that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Of some of the things I've applied from knowing his astrology, I'm seeing the manifestation of it working. And that is so cool. I get goosebumps. I'm just like, Oh my gosh. Like I, it was young. I was like, I got seven years to lay the foundation. And now I'm like, at this yeah. point, now we're in this new stage and to really see this kind of experiment, if you will, of using astrology as a parent mm -hmm. really made a difference. And right. I can't help, but really feel that it did. And it has, yeah. and it continues to, you know? Right. So yeah, I know it's not, it's, and it's part of my own journey too, obviously to be a parent and to learn more about emotions and how to regulate yeah. my own emotions and 
and um, feel more deeply and get out of my mind, get out of my head and just yes. feel. Just right. Think, and just like, feel. you know, I'd be a little more heart centered too. Yeah. Like I, like I have the same issues that Gemini, the Gemini Mercury and Gemini Venus, like get out of my head and stop ruminating about stuff. And it's like, what do I feel? What do I intuit? And, you know, something I've learned um, throughout my life that my intuition, even as an air sign, my intuition is right about 90% of the time. Like I just, if you really let it guide yeah. you, I, I mean, you'll find that it's right most of the time. If you Same. don't let yourself be influenced by what other people are telling you and don't let your, you know, I mean, use your head obviously, but you know, don't let your head guide you 100% of the time, all the time. Yeah. And it it really does guide you. And that's that's like the greatest gift of a Pisces child, I feel like, is to yes. teach the parent you can let your intuition guide you. And even about parenting, like this is the kind of parent I want to be. I'm intuiting that I should not be handling this like this. I should be handling it more like this. You're right most of the time. You know, that's just how- I definitely have learned to trust my own intuition a lot from him, no doubt. And when you have these little things that happen that become teachable moments, you're also learning the lesson, right? Right. So that's the thing I love about Aquarius, like I'm teaching to learn is basically what I do. Right. I'm teaching, but I'm also learning immensely. And so I've actually come into my own sort of personal power and, and trusting my own intuition and my own choices and things like this and creating my own boundaries and, and better balance in my own life and who I am and realizing, you know, what's, what's mine and what's other people's, all of that astrology has helped me do that. That's why the step one of like my nurturing, the, you know, astrology method is to always bring it back to self because right. it all right. starts with us. So I feel like, okay, I've, my child has really taught me a lot about trusting my own intuition too. Right. And, and knowing that my intuition is just looks a little different because I am up here. Right. And it's like, there's a knowingness as opposed to a feelingness. Yes, that's and exactly know it. right. I just it's, know it. I can't even explain I, it. I just yeah. know it. <laughs> oh my God. Like you hit it because that happens yeah. to me all the time. And I don't know because yeah. I'm a heavily Mercury individual, but I have Uranus in the first house. And there are times, they that's have true. been times, yeah, in, in a couple, yeah, even in the past couple of years, that all of a sudden I just know stuff. Like it's just everything makes sense and it locks into place. And I'm like, oh my God, why did I not see this earlier? this is why this is this way. Uh And this is what I have been struggling to understand. And now I completely see it, see it clearly. And it's like in a flash and I don't, it's just so funny. And um, it's just, that you just know stuff, you know, I, I it's hard to explain, but yeah, that's exactly right. You just know knowing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just, you just know it. And it's just like this understanding suddenly you have that you didn't have before yeah and kids just so. you know because they just feel it like i don't oh, know yeah. i just feel this way and when yeah. i would say why do you think you feel that way he's like i don't know my son's the same way my i don't Scorpio. know I yeah just do and i'm like fair enough yeah man. the same fair thing I, he'll say <laughs> stuff and i'll say how do you know that i just do no but I, i'm so i'm not accusing you i don't care where you learned it i'm just curious about where you learned it i honestly don't know mom i just know like of yeah. course you just know <laughs> so yeah so yeah um, yeah, so I want to touch on something about air sign parents, Aquarius parents. Mm. So air sign people tend to live on their nerves a lot of the time, mm. right? Because we're very scattered and we have this mental energy. It's constantly, it's like an electrifying energy, especially now with Mars and Gemini and Mercury retrograde. It's like oh, Uranus yeah. your your like retrograde. I know all this stuff. <laughs> it's like this, this electrified mental energy all the time. So we can be emotionally like triggered a lot of the times very easily especially if we have a deeply sensitive emotional child like pisces right so you know my advice to parents about that is to work on their emotional triggers obviously um and and for example like if you feel yourself getting worked up to the point that you may be having some kind of emotional outburst or a lot you know raising voices take a deep breath put yourself in the child's position and you know, Aquarius people are really good at that, putting themselves in the shoes of the other person. And often that mental switch will kind of help you diffuse because you're yeah. seeing it from the child's point of view, right? Yeah. And this goes to like, you know, making sure that your child feels safe and secure, comfortable talking to you. And yeah. to do that, you got to work on your emotional triggers. And so often when I talk to parents about this, and I've, I'm still working on this myself, a lot of the emotional triggers they have to their kids, otherwise innocuous behavior 
is stuff from their own parents' childhood that they are working on and we're not allowed to do, or we're not allowed to show emotion or had to mm-hmm. comply, yes. you know, without question. And these are things for the parents to work on, but we carry those ways of conditioning into our parenting a lot of the time. But you, so if you're, you know, having, having these reactions that are triggered by your kid's behavior, take a break, take a breath. You can even tell your kid, you know what? I'm overreacting right now, but it has nothing to do with you. It's about me. So I am not upset with you. I am just kind of triggered. I'm going to take a few minutes for myself. And Pisces understands that because they are so sensitive emotionally themselves. If you tell them, I need a few minutes to calm my nerves, they will completely understand. Or I need a few minutes alone. They will understand. Don't be afraid or feel feel guilty. I don't want to tell you how to feel. Yeah. But, you know, I don't want you know, parents to feel guilty about taking that time for themselves. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the benefit of the heir parent yeah. to water child is to be able to explain, hey, I have feelings just like you. I need a a timeout just like you. You know, they do understand feelings. So when you speak to them about feelings, they get it probably better than you do. You know, like mommy needs a timeout. I'm just, right. you know, it'd be like, are you mad at me? No, I'm just yeah. frustrated about X, Y, and Z it has nothing to do with you. We're good. Give them a hug. I just need mommy needs some time, whatever, you know, and, and that's a, a really good point is that they, you can communicate that and they and they get it when you're talking feeling okay no problem I know right. I know right. how that is yeah right for sure exactly the last kind of main point I wanted to talk about before we kind of wrap things up Dominique is we've touched on this already like you know Aquarius parents Aquarius is a naturally extroverted energy that doesn't mean that all Aquarius people are big extroverts but generally it's an extroverted social energy that identifies with the group identifies with community has a lot a big social circle Pisces as we've talked about tends to be more of an introverted, private, reserved energy. So even if your Pisces child is not necessarily an introvert, they will often need periods of rest and solitude just to recharge from the kind of emotional overwhelm they have from being so empathic. So that's kind of my last big tip for the Aquarius parent is you may feel compelled to be social, but remember, you're going to have to build in time for your Pisces child, periods of solitude, periods of alone time, downtime at home. In my house, we call them introvert days because all three of us are big introverts. You're just staying at home, doing whatever you want. So things like that. So just remember that if your Pisces child is starting to, you know, get, uh, you know, worked up or even a tantrum, it may be because they're feeling this overwhelm and they need a break. And it is your job as a parent to recognize that because the child, especially if they're young, may not have the words to tell you, yes, I'm feeling emotional overwhelm and I need some alone time. Your right. job is to recognize that and say yes. no to people when they say, let's hang out, let's do this. Well, I need to be at home with my kid today. We need, we're going to have some, you know, right. parent family time. Yeah. Protect your time, protect your energy for you and for your Pisces child. Yeah, I think the energy thing is a big one. And the Pisces child is very naturally empathic. Water children technically are, you know, Mm -hmm. they definitely feel their environments very strongly. And so when they come home and I've recently, um, someone had told me this, I think it was like Ann Ortley told me at the uh, conference when I met her, she was like, oh yeah, just throw that kid in the shower every day when he comes home from school. Like they take on everything, right? So definitely like ways of clearing your energy, help them to understand that they absorb right. and like take a shower, you know, cleanse, relax. It's going to help really alleviate all of that. Or, you know, I have a friend who has a, um, a cancer child, but it's conjunct Mars. I'm like, mm-hmm. let take that kid to the park and let him mm-hmm. run off that they're wound up after school because they yeah. have absorbed everything, yeah. all the right. energy, all the kids right. and all the happenings. And they're just wound up and, and have all this extra energy. You don't know what to do with or an, in a Pisces child case, maybe a lot of emotional energy about what right. happened. So this happened today and we didn't get along or this one did that or, and they're feeling all caught up in the emotions of the day. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, let's chill out. And for a long time, you know, it was like, come home, do homework, whatever. Pisces child can't do that. They need breaks, mm-hmm. they need time and space. And so he would come home and have a snack and jump on his iPad and watch a video or something. And I was like, why do you always do that? And I realized that's his way of checking out from the day Mm -hmm. and saying, I need to just go somewhere that makes me laugh, something that's silly, something that like I can meditate and no brainer for me and have a snack. And then I can refocus on work. And I started to realize, oh, that's his way because he doesn't necessarily want to shower until he goes before he goes to bed and get into a routine. But if you have a pool, 
have that kid jump oh, yeah. in the pool every day. Yeah. You know, like something for that water child to really cleanse or or shed that energy that they've absorbed from the day. You know, ways that they can check out. That's a healthy escape. Come home and just mm-hmm. sort of like do whatever the child needs to do that they they kind of can tune back into themselves and recognize, okay, that was a busy day. That was a lot, right. <laughs> you right, know, right, right, and, right. and come back to center for themselves. So recognizing what that is for your parent, I mean, I mean, for your child, your Pisces child or your water child, you know, as they need some outlet to shed off the, the energy or everything they've absorbed in a day or a way to sort of check out and recheck in with self kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I would just say as a final note for me in terms of like parenting a Pisces child is really understanding, like the importance of understanding where that Pisces energy lines up in their natal chart, like where, what house that falls in can really show kind of where they're trying to, or how they're trying to figure out who they are. If identity is the, the thing, if it's in the fourth house, very much identified with their family, right. Or, you know, I'm realizing with it in my son's 11th, that his, he's really learning who he is through friendships, through the dynamic mm-hmm. of friendship and groups and being part of a team. Like he loves being on the team for team sports because of the camaraderie and the connection. It's not about winning and competition. It's about the, the right. connection of the group. Right. And so where is that? And where is, where, what area of life is, are they really exploring to figure out who they are? You know what I mean? And then look to where the, the other connections in your charts might be. You know, I have Mercury in Aquarius. His Venus is in Aquarius con- conjunct. His Mercury is in Pisces and my um, Venus is in Pisces. So see where other where right. other places that you might have connection that gives you um, outlets for how to work together. You know, so we can't always look, you know, you may have a son and a um, Aquarius son and a Pisces son child and parent, but there's so much more to the chart. Right. And so that's these are general energies, but you can really get clues into how can I navigate or where can I connect with this child in a way that um, I have more resources and more ways uh, to support us in this relationship or where is maybe my husband better than I am, right? Or my partner has these great abilities and utilize all your resources to help nurture the nature of this, you know, special Pisces, you know, being that is very different um, from, from ourselves, you know? Where's your Pisces and what are they, what are they illuminating for you in that area? You know, where does their Pisces fall for you, you know? So figuring out those, those other deeper connections can really, I think, help um, any parent, um, parent, a Pisces child that has all of this depth and sensitivity and emotion and all these things that an air parent's like, oh, how am I figuring all this out? So I can be the best parent possible. Yeah. We're up here, you know, overthinking right. it all, right. um, but finding where we can drop in and where we can really be of best service to their growth. Absolutely. That'll make, that's all great stuff. Yeah. I mean, the, the Pisces child is a gift, man. You get that child and that's, that child will teach you stuff. Oh yeah. You. It's wise <laughs> beyond words. Wise yeah. It's, beyond it's amazing. I like mm-hmm. it's they'll, they'll just, yeah, they're just old souls and they will yep. teach you stuff that you didn't even know that you didn't know. It's, it's exactly. crazy. It's crazy. We I, you didn't know you needed to learn. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That, that's why you have the child. That's why that child was sent to you. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. This is all great stuff, Listen. Dominique. We really, I really appreciate you coming on and, My and talking to everybody. It was so fun. I'm going to put Dominique's contact info, hmm. oh, yes. uh, website and her podcast. She has a nurturing astrology podcast. I'm going to put yeah. all that info in her contact info in the video description below. Uh, Dominique, is there anything else you want to share with the audience as far as how to contact you and your services? Yeah. Uh, nurturingastrology.com is the website. Everything's there. Uh, like I said, nurturing astrology podcast, it's all really easy. And, uh, all of my offerings are there. We have, um, parent teacher, um, like courses and classes that we've created to really help you dive into understanding your child's chart. Yeah. I do, uh, readings for families, for parents and happy to help and continue serving, um, parenting with astrology the best I can. (laughs) I love it. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Always love chatting with you. Uh, We will definitely have you back. Thanks so much for coming. And 
We will be back uh, next week, uh, everybody. If you have any questions about what we've talked about or any other topics you want to hear more about, please uh, leave them in the comments below. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye.